Hacktoberfest is coming, or it might be here already, but is your repo ready? I know you want more stars, I know you want more contributors, but is your repo ready for more stars and for more contributors? You need to have a really good readme. I mean really good. And you won't get it really good by yourself. You need other people to contribute and make it better. Our readme in the BioDrop project I think is pretty good. It's not perfect, so please come and improve it. But it didn't get here by me or another person or even just by the maintainers alone. It got here, it got good because of you. So you need people to come to your project and have a good kind of basis so they can see what the project is about, how to get started, and we'll get into that shortly, and then they can improve it further. This readme file has probably had hundreds, if not thousands of contributions to it to get it looking, I think, pretty, pretty good. The next thing that you want to do for your repo, and do check this, don't assume you've done all these, check it. Go to the Insights tab at the top and go to the Community Standards. And here you'll see that you've got these items that should be checked. Have have you got a description? Have you got a readme? The amount of repos that don't have a description on it, I don't understand why. Tell people how awesome your project is and what it's about. And then later on, you'll be able to show them. Has it got a code of conduct? I and many others do not contribute to a project if it doesn't have a code of conduct. Does it have a contributing file? And does it have a license? Because if you don't add a license, it doesn't mean there is no license for your project. It just means you're defaulting to the GitHub terms and conditions. And I have a whole video on licensing if you want to learn more about that, but please add a license. MIT is a very popular license. It's the most relaxed. The next thing I see projects missing out on is a massive opportunity to help people on board to your project, but also help your project discoverability is issue labels. Are you using issue labels? And don't just use them to appear in the search. I see so many projects having good first issue and also help wanted on the same issue. And a good first issue is not help wanted. They're like a two opposite ends of the scale. Help wanted means you're stuck. You don't know what you're doing and you want some help and you can't give that much information on it. Good first issue is the opposite. You know what to do and it'll probably take you longer to write the issue than it will to actually make the changes. But it's a great way to onboard people so you know what you need to do and you need to write the steps in that issue to get people to be able to understand what to do without a lot of knowledge about the project or probably no knowledge about the project. Another thing that we do and I highly recommend that you do is add points to your issues. And I know points won't mean anything to anyone else other than the person who's creating it. However, at least it gives that person a scale. So for example, if you want to contribute to the BioDrop project, you can see this first one's got two points and this um, third one has five points. The second one is awaiting triage, so no points have been assigned to it yet. But two and five points, you don't know what two points mean and you don't know what five points mean, but you're not expected to know. But what you do know is the five points is like two and a half times kind of more complicated than the two pointer. So therefore you can think, right, I haven't got much time today. Let me pick something easy. Or I'm getting started with this project. Let me pick something a bit easier. And I say easier, it's very subjective, but you can pick one or two points, maybe three points, but then five, eight points start getting a lot more complicated, a lot more involved. So I would definitely start with something with less points, get to know the community, get to know the project, get to know the maintainers. And then when you pick something more challenging, then the maintainers maintainers can work with you on it because they know you're there to stick around and you're not just trying to get green squares. So I highly recommend using points on your repo as well. And if you're the only one who understands what the value of those points are, that's absolutely fine. Another thing you can do to get your repo discovered is not spam the link everywhere. I see people coming to so many discords and just spam, 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 just the link, even no explanation about the repo, or they might say star our repo. No one's going to do it. You need to give them a reason to go have a look at it and then they're more likely to start it. But use topics. What technologies are you using? Are you taking part in Hacktoberfest? Um, do add those topics. People do search for those. How are your onboarding docs? Is it clear? Do people know do they need to raise an issue first, get an issue assigned to them? Do they just create a pull request? Is it the wild, wild west in your repo? And that's fine. I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying, do people know what they need to do? So make sure you have 
a contributing guide. We have one again, this has been uh, improved over time and we even have a video as well, which I think is uh, pretty cool. The video does get our date quicker than the text though, because we can update that more easily. So in our project, we ask people to check there's no existing issue and get it assigned to them. Or if you found an issue you want to work on, make sure you get it assigned to you so we don't end up with five pull requests solving the same thing because then which one do you pick? The one that came in first, the one that is better, Again, that's subjective. No, I don't think that works out the way. Get the issue assigned to you. Therefore, you know that's assigned to you and you know you can work on it at your own pace without taking too long. We have about a two week window and then we unassign and assign someone else if there's no activity in those two weeks. Obviously, if it's under review and there's conversations going on, the two weeks kind of starts on the last activity. But do what you think is important for your project. And again, we've got quite a lot of docs here. You might not have that to begin with, and that's absolutely fine, but do something to get started because if the file doesn't exist, people can't improve it and contribute to it. Whereas if you create the file, just add one line, like any questions, come and ask us in Discord. That's absolutely fine. And other people can improve the file. And that's a great way to onboard people. The next thing I would suggest is automate everything. Not because you don't want to have those conversations with your contributors, but you don't want to have the conversations about you're missing a space, you know, extra, need a comma here, extra blah, blah, blah. We're using double quotes, not single quotes. You don't want to have those conversations. You want automation just to take care of it, report back, fix it, whatever you do with your automation. And then you want to have the conversation on the architectural, on the way to do things, like the more interesting and creative conversations. So automate everything as much as possible. But there is a but. Don't automate too much and put everything, for example, in a pre-commit hook. We have tried that and we actually found that stopped people from contributing to our project because they couldn't commit their changes to even a draft pull request so we could then discuss their changes because the commit was saying, linting errors, this errors, this errors, uh, commit message error, this error, and they got frustrated and left. And I completely understand when you're new to a project or new to tech, all these errors, and most people don't even read the errors. So no matter how kind of much feedback you give them on these errors, they're just gonna get fed up and move on. So what I would suggest is try to allow people to commit and push their changes. And then on the GitHub action, run everything automated. That's super important because now that they've raised a pull request and it might be in draft, it might be ready for review, whatever state it's in, you can at least talk about specific changes. It's a lot easier than talking about stuff you can't see. Because if you can't see something, it's very hard to talk about it and everyone makes all these assumptions. So allow people to commit and push to a branch or you know to a branch in their fork and then a pull request gets raised and then you you can definitely talk about it. Talking about automations, what are some of the automations you can do? Let me show you what we've got. And then you can just kind of copy and paste them and pick them out for yourself. So we have a build. Most projects have a build command. Make sure you run that on every change, on every pull request. It just feeds back that the, the code, you know, is built correctly. Another thing we do, we create releases on every successful merge to main. And we use Semver for that. So therefore, we if it's a fix, um, the last digit has changed. If it's a new feature, then the kind of the second digit has changed and if it's a breaking new release kind of going from version one to version two the first digit changes and that's really really awesome we automate that so our commit messages use conventional commits and I'll, I'll show you that in a second but that's super super useful and we also then deploy on a github action as well let me show you these commits that i'm talking about so if you go to these commits you can see that we've got data and again data is one we've created specifically for our project you probably won't need that but if you if you look down here we have fix say it was version v1 1.2.3, it will then bump it to the last digit from three to a four. Uh, and then if you have a feature one, it will then bump the second digit, as I mentioned. And so our releases are all created with Semva, and I'll quickly show you that as well. So you can see they're all incremented depending on what changes were made. And this was a bug fix. It's, it, this is the commit message and you can go straight to the, the commit and the pull request, which is super awesome. So we get this change log in the release, which is great. So this fix actually had two bug fixes. Um, and if I can find, here's a feature. This one had a feature. And if we collected a few of these together, you would then have features and then it will list the features. And then you have bug fixes and it will list the bug fixes, um, which is just super, super awesome. And it's a GitHub action that you can copy and paste. And have a place for people to chat. I mean, we use GitHub discussions and I want to use them more. We're going to review your open source projects on a Twitter space soon and I will start a GitHub discussion so therefore you can add your project to that. But also have a place like Discord. Discord is a really great place to chat with the community in real time. 
I much prefer it to Slack, but don't let anyone at Slack know. One thing I want you to remember, being a maintainer is really difficult. It's so much fun, it's so rewarding, it's amazing, I wouldn't change it for the world, but it is difficult. And especially as you grow, it does get more difficult for you. And that's how, why you'll automate more, and that's why you bring maintainers on to help you. People that you trust, people that can help you manage the project is super important. I think we have about seven maintainers on the BioDrop repo. And I think we need to probably go a few more as the project grows. And also, we've got our project, I think, into a pretty good state, but our, our repo isn't perfect. So please make any suggestions, any improvements, any feedback in the comments below. And if you're new to a project, please remember that it's an advantage, not a disadvantage, because you have this fresh perspective that no one else has. Once someone's onboarded to the project and they get familiar with it, then they can't have that fresh perspective on how easy or difficult it is to understand the project to get started. So if you're new to tech and new to a project, don't think of this as a disadvantage. This is an advantage. Please uh, give your feedback, ask questions, and that will help the maintainers and you make more improvements to the project for the next person. And anyway, come and geek out with me on the BioDrop repo. I'm working on it full time. Uh, link in the description below. And we have an Help Discord. I'll see you there.